uh, can pot be used spiritually, and is, uh, does abstinence help? I don't think there's a rule book about it. There are people that use grass as a spiritual practice, and there are people who feel that it closes them down in certain ways, and the after effects and the come downs and the refractory periods don't allow their body to be sensitive enough and pure enough to receive. To, and that, I mean, there are ways in one, which one uses pot as a defense mechanism because one can't accept one's own beauty, and so one feels one has to do something to become enough for the moment. And facing that not enoughness is an interesting practice of abstinence after a lot of use of grass. On the other hand, uh, there are many, many people in the spiritual path in the East who use grass as a vehicle, especially when your path is devotional. It often allows you to get out of your own paranoia and get into spaces of expansive melting things. And it's a, just a yoga, it's just another yoga. It has certain drawbacks because as a yoga, it's illegal in this culture. So that a lot of energy has to be put into the paranoia that goes with it, you know? And the way you get it and the cost of it and the whole game. And sometimes it's like if I said, well, you can meditate, we're gonna meditate tomorrow, like the way the Jews did it in Germany, we're gonna have a, a, we're gonna have a, a Passover ceremony in so-and-so's basement but you know, if we get caught, we're all gonna get murdered. But we're gonna have this thing. And that's the same thing, see? I mean, you're, you're playing with that other energy. And if you can stay so free that you can go to it and, and be with God, great. But often it gets, you get so fascinated with the mechanics of the game because they're, they're scary and they're exciting and they're so dramatic, you know, you lose it. So there's a tricky thing in using illegal strategies. <laughs> Is that, is that dealing with the question? Yeah.